Hi, today is Saturday, October 22nd. I'm Jason Shapiro with CrowdedMarketReport.com. Um, today I thought I'd talk a little bit um, about the difference between contrarian and consensus. Because a lot of times we think we're being contrarian, but we're actually being consensus. Um, and the issue here is that consensus loses money over time. And it's important to make the distinction about over time, because there are times, which is necessary, um, that consensus makes money, and they make money for a period of time, which sets them up for the fact that they lose money over time. Um, because what people tend to do is remember the times that they were making money, and therefore ignore the times when they're losing money, and consider that to just be temporary, and slowly that just drips them away to where they, over time, lose money. But they need to make money for periods of time in order, in order to stay in the game um, it's like you know you go play golf and you play horrible but then you have a great 18th hole and you can't wait to come back right uh, so um, there's a few things here uh, right now to me that seem very very consensus um, and I think people think they're being contrarian in doing it um, and I'll go through I got five written down here and there's probably more but these are the five I'm seeing the most one it's okay that the stock market is going down here because it's offering you an opportunity to buy and in five years you'll be glad you did. Okay, um, that is the consensus here. I would argue with it. I, I, my personal opinion is that in five, ten, and maybe even fifteen years the market is going down for that entire period. Um, and so, again, people will buy here maybe the market will go up there's certain and for this to happen by the way what i'm saying you need the market to go up for periods of time because it can't just go straight down because if it keeps going straight down it'll be at zero and it can't go down anymore so you'll have these periods and you, you always get these in bear markets everybody knows you have these these big moves up it makes everybody happy again makes every com everybody comfortable again and then it whacks them to new lows again and it happens again and again and again and i think that's going to happen over a number of years so this idea of in five years you're going to be okay Consensus is not going to be good. Um, another one, uh, bonds offer a great return here. Uh, I hear it all day. People saying, buy the one-year note, buy the two-year note. You know, you're locking in 4%. You can't lose that 4% because you're locking it in, and that may be true. But what happens if, uh, you know, inflation is at 10%, and that 4% didn't really get you very far? And, you know, everyone's obviously playing for this Fed pivot and the, 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 this, this Fed pause at the very least. That's not to say the Fed can pause and let's say things don't improve on the inflation front or, or on whatever front and then, and then they're just going to have to raise again. You know, it's almost like as soon as they pause, assets are going to go up, you're going to get more inflation and they're going to they're like in this cycle um, of death. So uh, this idea that short bonds or buying bonds here, you know, you lock in your return and it's good. I, I don't think it's a good consensus idea and I don't think it's contrarian at all because I hear it every day, okay? Next one, the Fed pivot idea. The Fed pivot changes the game, okay? The bear market's over when the Fed pivots. Um, again, I go back to the, the idea of the Fed stop raising rates for a while doesn't mean that they're stop, gonna stop raising rates forever. There's no reason they can't stop for a quarter and then start again. Um, and I believe very strongly that if the Fed is going, especially the way that the markets trade now and the way that people are thinking about it, let's say December, for whatever reason, um, which is, is about seven weeks away from the December FOMC, let's say that's the last Fed rate rise, at least temporarily. We won't know if it's temporary or not, but let's just say that they're going to come out in December and they're going to say that's our last one for a while. The market's not going to bottom on that day. Okay, the market is a discounting mechanism. It's going to discount that fact in because that's what everybody seems to want is the Fed to stop because that's what everyone seems to think is the problem here. So it will discount it in. The market will move up into that last rate rise and will most likely be a sell at that point, not a buy, right? Um, so this idea that, you know, the Fed pivot and then we're back to normal, I, I think that's a horrible consensus idea. Here's another one I love. The market can't bottom until earnings revisions come down. I mean, really, if everybody, and I can tell you, everybody is saying that. If everybody's saying that earning revisions have, have to come down, then haven't they already 
in their mind and in their investment process lowered earnings? I mean, do we have to wait for Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley to come in and actually give the earnings revision? Is that really what the market waits for? I don't think so. Again, it's a discounting mechanism. People are already discounting in the fact that earnings are going to come down. And the truth is they're not even coming down. But people have discounted the fact in. So again, this is where maybe we can get one of these bounces here, these bear market bounces, to suck everybody back in. Because what to me, they've already discounted in the fact that earnings are going to come down. What happens if earnings don't come down to where they've, they've done that? Well, then we're going to most likely get a rally. And you, you saw that with like Netflix this week and, and actually a number of other companies, Pepsi and whoever else. And I'm not a huge fundamental person, but uh, one person who I do respect on their work on that was explained to me this week. You have revenues going up because of inflation. People are charging whatever, let's call it 10% more for their goods, okay? And their number one cost, which is, um, labor costs are going up less. So your revenues are going up 10, your costs are going up five. I don't see how that hurts earnings. I also don't see, by the way, how that gets you to fire people. <laughs> um, and the Fed is clearly waiting for this thing where, you know, employment uh, or unemployment starts to go up and I, I don't see it happening. So while people get excited into a Fed pause, I don't think that pause is going to last very long, which is why I think the rally into that Fed pause will be a great sale because unemployment's not going up. There's no reason for it to go up. And the last one is recession is coming. Okay, uh, second quarter 2023, third quarter 2020, whenever it is, the, the recession is definitely coming. Okay, that, that may be true, but who cares, right? Uh, the, to me, the market is not a function of other than over a very, very long period of time, the market is not a function of the GDP. I mean, I lived in Hong Kong in 1992. I can remember the Hang Seng Index was at 12,500 at the time, okay? Since 1992 to now, the Hong Kong economy, I don't know how many times it's gone up, but I bet you it's triple the size. And you know what? The Hang Seng Index is at 16,000. So it's gone up 30% in 30 years, 1% a year, while the economy has probably tripled, right? Um, I've spoken about this before, but the Japanese stock market topped in 1989. It's a good, you know, uh, let's call it 30% lower than it was in 1989. And the Japanese economy has clearly grown a lot since 1989 so this idea just to reverse it that recession is coming and therefore that's somehow bad you know it's just a consensus silly argument right one has nothing to do with the other and by the way if everybody is expecting recession to come then aren't they going to therefore prepare for that by cutting back or whatever and therefore affecting the fact that that recession may not be coming right um, because they've already discounted that in. So that's another consensus idea that I think is, is silly here. That, that's the general idea, right? Consensus. It, it's going to lose your money over time. So you have to, you have to stay away from it. it. might make you money for a time, but it's going to lose you money over time. And those are what I see as the big consensus ideas here. Okay? So as always, any questions or comments? Oh, and I have to say, if, if you like what we're doing here, can you please you know, join our, our, our YouTube channel, um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like more, you know, we have the crowdedmarketreport.com and please subscribe there where you'll get a lot more commentary. You'll get, you know, a weekly newsletter. You'll get access to our Discord page, which is very active every day and night and weekend for that matter. We have a lot of trading freaks on there talking about all kinds of different things. You also get access to our COT charts, which I can tell you are the the, the best COT charts um, available, um, not just from a number of markets that we cover perspective, but also from how you can manipulate the charts if you want, uh, different days, different time periods. Um, they're, they're really, really good. So again, if you like what we're doing here, please uh, join us at the crowdedmarketreport.com as well. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. And otherwise, uh, have a good week. Thank you.